Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to work with data in D3. So this is great. Now we've, we're actually, you can see we've got a constant set of a data set set to equal to an array. And we remember array. So we've got a 12, 31, 22, 17, 25, 18. We've got an array um, and I think we're going to make it into a bar chart. Let's see here. The D3 library focuses on data-driven approach. When you have a set of data, you can apply D3 methods to display it on the page. Data comes in many formats, but this challenge uses a simple array of numbers. So here we have a simple array of numbers. So the first step is to make D3 aware of the data. The data method is used on a selection of DOM elements to attach the data to those elements. The data set is passed as an argument to the method. Okay, so the data set, meaning this is the data set, is passed as an argument to the method. So the method's a function. We're saying this function, and then we're going to pass in the data method, uh, the data variable. Uh, a common workflow pattern is to create a new element in the document for each piece of data in the set. D3 has the enter method for this purpose. When enter is combined with the data method, it looks uh, at the selected elements from the page and compares them to the number of data items in the set. If there are fewer elements than data items, it creates the missing elements. Here is an example that selects a unordered list element or a UL element and creates a new list item based on the number of entries in the array. So here we've got a body element. Inside of there we have an unordered list and then we've got our JavaScript. Inside of our JavaScript we set, have a data set with three elements of three string elements A, B, and C. And so D3 is selecting the unordered list elements. So it's going D3 selects this and then it says select all list elements. Well there's no list elements yet but I guess we're using dot data to um, inject D3 with the data set and then we're saying enter so we're adding a list element for each of the items and then we're appending a new list element um, per item and so inside of there we're adding a new item or the text of new item so it may seem confusing to select elements that don't exist yet this code is telling d3 first select the ul on the page next select all list items which returns an empty selection then the data method reviews the data set and runs the following code three times once for each item in the array one, one, three times, one for each item in the array. So the data set, and so it's going enter, append list element, new item. Enter, append list element, new item. Enter, append list element, new item. Uh, the enter method sees that there are no list elements on the page, but it needs three, one for each piece of the data set. The new list element uh, are appended to the unordered list and have the text uh, new item. So we want to select the body node then select all the h2 elements okay cool so we're going to go uh inside of the script we want to say um d3 dot select wait yeah select the body node sle select and we're going to select body okay so that's the first one and now we're going to chain on that i think what do we want to do select all and we're going to select all h2 elements uh, then we're going to select, even though there aren't any here, we're still, that's just the way D3 works. I think we just have to memorize that. And then we want to have three, create and append an H2 tag for each item in the data set. So first off, we want to get the data, um, have D3 read the data. So we're going to go data, and then inside of here, we're going to pass in this variable. We're going to pass in the data set. And then we need to say enter, which creates one, I believe. Uh, which creates a new element for each one and then we want to append the uh, Create and append an h2 tag for each item in the data set. So we're going to append an h2 tag uh, Yeah, so we're going to run through this we're going to enter append and inside of it. We're going to say uh, It should say the text in h2 should say new title So we want to write dot text and we're going to say new title and you'll see it prints it out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times, which happens to be if you go console.log, the data set, uh, dot length, 
you'll see it's got nine. So that's the, the that's the number of elements in here, and this is printed out nine times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now, obviously, this is kind of insane. This is just a pr like a way to s see how you write this thing. You don't need the console log in here. Um, but uh, well, yeah, we're gonna go as we go further with this. We'll be able to make. Um, bars that are related to the size of the element here and like may maybe how many pixels tall they are and then that's how we start using data to visualize um, yeah we start using data to visualize we start using data to build the documents that visualize the data so it's easier for humans to read anyways hope you guys enjoyed this one we'll see you in the next lesson